Hello, everybody, and welcome back to G2 Class Legends. Lothar is here next to me looking like the Adonis of a man that he is. Aww. We have just seen a, uh, a bit of an exhibition of the Midrange Druid versus Patron Warrior matchup between Crane and RDU, two very top players at each of the individual decks. Uh, but we will move on to a uh, very exciting matchup, <laughs> no capper, between Life Coach and Elky. <laughs> And uh, Lothar, Why is it you... exciting? I was going to say, Lothar, would you like okay. to break the news to Twitch chat as to what we're about to watch? So now everyone thinks, oh my god, it's the warrior mirror. But it's not. It's, it's the mirror between druids. So it might be either very fast or it might be very slow. Those matches can go either way. Because if one of the players hits on Wildgrove and innervates and just gets the early pressure on, uh, the game can be just over really quickly but in, on the other hand and um, if both players mi are missing those mana acceleration then the games be can be just uh, like an arena uh game where, where they're smashing each other with yetis right. and they trading for like you know card advantage with rafts and this might go either way unless some uh, someone from those two players like or Elki, are bringing some uh, some tech, tech choices that will make a huge difference in a mirror match. Let's say mind control deck. Let's say Black Knight. Let's say Ancient of War. Um, Ragnaros. Um, what else? I don't know. I just want to see an Ancient of War get big, get Black Knighted. Now that you've said it, like I haven't seen that happen in so long. I just want to see yeah. it. Come on, please. Um, I guess the the other element here is, of course, each player does have two Druid decks available to them. So yeah. You've said, you know, maybe one of them has just brought a, a teched out midrange druid as their other option because we have seen aggro druid being played as the alternate druid deck. You know, very popular deck a few months ago, fallen off a little bit now. Um, but how, Lothar, how do you feel about, say, the aggro druid versus midrange druid matchup? It's heavily dependent on the innovates. Okay. I mean, for the midrange druid, because if you can pull off a quick keeper mm -hmm. of the grove to kill a um aggressive minion that is staring at you and he will not be able to dish out the damage and then you trade for two new minions right because it's a two four body that can kill a knife juggler and, or kill the living roots over the course of two turns then it's very important and for for the midrange druid or just an early um early druid of the claw in town form let's say that will also make uh, make the game really different but if the midrange druid misses on the on the acceleration on the initial acceleration of the board mm -hmm. then the uh aggressive druid will just roll over yeah over the midrange druid will just kill him in four turns or five because it doesn't matter if you play a single minion on five even it might be belcher or whatever right. um there will be just so much damage from the first turn from the second turn for the aggressive druid that he will finish him off eventually with a savage roar even without a force of nature yeah, it makes sense. I remember way back in the day, like the, when when Next Ramus first came out, like the the Haunted Creeper, Violet Teacher, Power of the Wild, like that slightly quicker Druid deck was definitely a little bit favoured against the the slower mid range Druid that was sort of playing Spectral Knights and things at the time. It's come a long Spectral way. Spectral Knights, oh my yeah. God, you remember? You just remind, reminded me about that. That was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Before before Piloted Shredder came out, it was Yeti into Spectral Knight. Believe it or not, that was a thing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that, that was that is very true. That, that was, but that was a very brief uh, meta game choice, right? It, it lasted like did last like two weeks or something like that. It was a reaction to like all the Miracle Rogue that was around back then, like because yeah, America... the Saps, right? Yeah, Leroy and Gadgetan got nerfed in sort of the lead up to GBG being released. So after Next Ramus came out, there was this big period of like everyone was just playing like mid range Hunter and Miracle Rogue, like that was the dichotomy of the meta. Um, so Spectral Knight was a was a great card against both those decks because you could like Sun Fury Protector up your Spectral Knight and then the Hunter couldn't Hunter's Market and like all this crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, that that meta is long since passed and we're we're back here now. But the the point being that we tried to get at with that long rambling analogy was that generally historically the faster Druid deck has been somewhat favored when they match up against each other. Um, yep. so we might have this weird situation where like both players have brought mid-range druid and aggro druid and they both queue up aggro druid trying to get that favorable matchup at the start so. and to be honest i'm not that experienced when it comes to two aggro druids battling it out it's something i'm not really familiar with all right agreed 
Um, but having said that, it looks like the exact opposite has happened, and we just had the two mid-range druids. We see Wild Growth in Elki's hand, not a card in uh, mid in Aggro Druid, and Life Coach, uh, Mulliganed Away, and Azure Drake, which is, again, not a card that you're going to be playing in an aggressive druid. So this seems to very much just be a combination of two mid-range druids about to butt heads. And we see that Life Coach has the Innovate, Elki has the Wild Growth. Which of these two cards do you think you'd rather have, Lothar? I would rather have the Wild Growth. In this case, I mean, unless Life Code would have, uh, would have a Palter Shredder really early on, so you can play it on turn 1, turn 2, then it seems like a like a better option. But wow, Elki has a really good opening hand. Yeah, agreed. That Innovate is not really going anywhere fast for Life Coach right now. It's not really, an, it's not combined with a, with a proactive minion that can allow him to, to get value and tempo out of it. So the Wild Growth into Shredder start from Elki here is Ooh. looking... Never mind! All right. But Life Coach is missing on the Crucial 4 drops. He is, but basically any minion that comes out of his deck that isn't Ancient of Law... I don't know, even Ancient... So literally any minion that comes out of his deck is playable right now. That is a savage draw. So because of the coin and the innovate, he could have played anything up to and including Dr. Boom that turn. So yeah. uh, any uh, minion was a really strong draw there. And he's, yeah, as you say, really unfortunate just to whiff and pick up the savage draw here. So it seems like um, like a forced Keeper of the Grove innovate rat. Ooh, yeah, that's ugly. Um, you would make that play hoping that your opponent doesn't have anything else proactive to do. Like maybe the rest of his hand resembles a little bit, uh, resembles yours a little bit. And actually, yeah, the rest of Elki's hand does very much resemble Life Coach's. So Life Coach would would be rewarded for this Silence plus Wrath play. But we'll see if that's the line he goes down. But I, it I might expect be... it will be because what else do you do, right? Well, it might be also just a Wrath. Mm. But I'm not sure if Life Coach will go for it. Like if you go for the Innervate turn. Uh, then the only minion that you can play next turn from the top of the deck would be Dr. Boom and Ancient of Laws. Everything right. else is still playable, right? If it's a sick drop, a sick, <laughs> sick drop. I mean, okay, if it's an Emperor, it will be a sick drop. But if it's a sick <laughs> drop, uh, then you can play a, a uh, Emperor or a Sylvanas with the coin, which is fine. Seems good. And Elki, very much in the same situation. Again, any minion he drew would have been playable because of that innovate. And he whiffs just the same as Life Coach did. Picks up a swipe. Um, yeah, and he's kind of got this same awkward decision of do I spend my whole turn removing this minion? But his removal option is uh, a little bit worse than what Life Coach had presented to him because his removal will just be kind of swipe and concede the tempo back to his opponent. So Tough choice here for Elki. I mean, that's a swipe. Yeah. That, that has to be a swipe. It's super inefficient, but um, you, everyone knows that it's so important to have board control, even if it's just a 2-4 minion uh, in the Bedroid Mirror. It's so important to have that body that is available just to, to trade with everything, with anything that you will play yourself. Right. I was, I was going to say, I mean, I understand, like, valuing board control definitely a big thing, but... You know, this, this play that he made here kind of contests the board as well when you keep the, the swipe in your hand. So I, I don't mind this play either. It seems to have been punished almost immediately by that Sludge Belcher top deck that kind of walls this out from making the trade now and you now don't have the Keeper to deal with the Sludge Belcher. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't mind the line that Elki took, especially since he has like a reasonable read that... Um, Life Coach made a play against a Shredder that involved an Innovate and didn't play a minion. So mm -hmm. you can kind of make a read on that hand that he doesn't really have any proactive minions. You can probably okay, get, this good read point. That, get this read that like his hand very much resembles yours. So just getting the minion dominance on board seems like a reasonable plan that turn. Um, and he gets to keep the swipe here, which will let him deal with the Sludge Belcher. It will, and he sacrifices the whole turn just to kill the first part of the Sludge Belcher. Yeah. But it's not looking that bad because Labcatch will need to use his hero power to finish off the Keeper next turn. Right. So then he would have to sacrifice the 7 drop. Oh. Oh, hi. Oh, well, then never mind. <laughs> and, I mean, a 7 drop, he would have played... Actually, makes some sense. If he would have draw any 7 drop, he would have still played the 7 drop instead of trading with the Keeper of the Group. So, you know what I say. What I was saying. Yeah, absolutely. And this has been a, a weird game up until this point. It's, you know, Druid plays all of these cards in their deck, which are immensely powerful in the right situation. You know, Force of Nature, Savage, Raw, Combo, Innovate, etc. All, like, in on, on the right turn, they're all, just, uh, you know, way above the power curve in the game. But 
these kind of draws are somewhat like the punishment of having those cards in your deck. And we've kind of seen this weird encounter between two Druid decks who who both got punished for including these these combo cards in their deck because they just didn't draw the good half of their deck, which is the minions that go along with it. It looks like Elki is going to innovate a combo here to clear this Dr. Boo. Doesn't feel great, but I guess he wasn't presented with uh, too many better options. Yeah, I agree. That's the only way you can deal with that situation because you just use the swipe. So what else what you what do, what else do you want to do? And you can't really leave those minions um for a savage world, right? Yeah. And he's gonna hope and pray that this bomb goes face. Alright, so he's he's so far he's survived the first bomb. Hopefully he can survive the second as well and manages to keep that minion on board. It's a small victory based on his hand and the, the board that he's now starting to face down from his opponent, but I'm sure he would love to keep that 2-3 in play, just as a little bit of small consolation right now. What do you think about the swipe this then? Because it, it looks awful. <laughs> it does. Um, but again, but... I'm sure, like, you know, these are, these are both very experienced poker players, just to give a, a story of the background. So they are very, very used to making reads, both on their opponent's behavior and the plays that they've made and betting patterns, for example, in, in poker. So they will probably both have picked up on the fact quite easily that each other's hand is not ideal. They, they they put each other on a lot of spells at this point. Um, so using those spells to remove the small amount of minions that each other do have may be a strong consideration for both sides here. Yeah, that's a good consideration. I mean, if you swipe the Keeper of the Grove this turn, then you put your opponent in a situation when he, ha when he can't play a 7-drop mm -hmm. if he wants to kill the bomb. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So, yeah. Bizarre. I mean, we've seen cards being used extremely inefficiently so far in this matchup. You know, combo. Ooh, Ooh Emperor. Perfect draw. Uh, I guess you wrath for one just to try and get like a, a higher value card into your hand to discount with Emperor. Does it make a difference? Because it, it, if if it's an example, uh, let's say Ancient of Law, mm -hmm. then it makes a difference. Yeah, and should Lord, that... Azure Drake, and maybe like a combo piece in the long term can have relevance. Uh, oh no, you've already used one full combo, so there isn't yeah, much yeah. discounting further combos. So it's better to have a active card in your hand for next turn. <laughs> oh. That's <okay>. lethal. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look at that! That's the 2000... I mean, how do you say that? One billionth game that yeah. ended up with a druid having a combo. Yeah. And innovate. <laughs> all right, settle in guys, we've got four more games of this to go, all right? We can do it. We can do it. Well, um, there's a certain, uh, there's a, we are certain that a druid player will advance yes. to the second part of the bracket in the round of eight. Very so true. that's is, that. There is in fact already one druid player who's made it through in, in Tice. Interestingly enough, so far, based on the, the first half of the first uh, round of the bracket, yeah. we have four different classes in top eight. We have Priest from Zetalot, uh, Warlock from Ecop, Druid from Tice, and Warrior from Crane. So. Yeah. so that's four different classes. So there will be still four after this match. But after that match, we still have uh, more pairs to play today. And those pairs will be... Mark Kennedy, which is also a Poker Pro, uh, versus AK Wonder. Then we have Super JJ versus Hoi, Orange versus Gara, and I guess there will be at least one different class in that that bunch of the players. Yeah, I mean we're yet to see a Paladin, and I suspect that Paladin is pretty good in this format. You just Secret Paladin and anything Paladin as a lineup seems pretty solid to me. So I'd expect we will see one of those before the the day is out. And Harrison Jones now is drawn in Elki's deck. Uh, that, that means he didn't switch, right? Yeah, it looks like they've kept the same deck. I can't imagine him switching like from a mid-range druid that didn't have Harrison to a mid-range druid that did have Harrison. That doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, so it looks like they've stuck with the same deck, which makes me wonder exactly what their other their other decks are. But Elki is just going to try his luck with the mid-range druid again. And again, this is a, a pretty um, interesting opening of just everyone drawing all the living roots in their deck. And then we go okay. from there. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the turn when you... Oh, wait, he didn't play the second Druid Roots. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Huh. So... Um... Wild Grove. So we can play Dr. Boom next turn. But did Dr. Boom next turn is weak to the Living Roots. 
and a big game hunter. So what would you say about Wildgrove into Shade of Naxxramas this turn? Uh, using the coin. coin. Yes, using yeah. the coin, because then next turn you play Azure Drake, and you will have six Azure mana. Drake. So yeah. you can... No, that makes no mm -hmm. sense. Mm. No, probably just the Wildgrove and Hero Power is better. Yeah, it's, it seems right. I mean, you're going to take down one of these 1-1s one here with the Hero Power. So, obviously, you said you were concerned about the Big Game Hunter. Obviously, they don't have to have Big Game Hunter. We went through this before with uh, RDU's play, where it's, you know, sure, early Doctor Boom has a punish, but most of the time, if you can get out an early Doctor Boom, it's a pretty good plan. But the Innovate Emperor here is uh, going to put a little bit of a crimp on this plan to coin out the Doctor Boom, because I don't think you want to give the Druid player a second tick of the Emperor here. Yeah, I guess so. That doesn't look too good, so it has to be a swipe. Yeah, swipe hero power is a ball clear, but you are just handing your initiative back to the opponent. Uh, it's not a, a huge turn. The, uh, the the slight amusement from Elky's side is that if a swipe is used here, he has the opportunity to then refill the board with Harrison Jones Living Roots, which is like the god swipe from your <laughs> opponent. Um, yeah. So we might, we might just see that one happening, and then he has two extremely powerful plays to follow that up with to take his pick from on turn six. So. I guess you have no option. That has to be swipe. You yeah. can't allow Druid to have double click from the Emperor. If, if you do that, if you let the Emperor live for two turns, then you can't really predict what will be happening right. in the upcoming turns. No way you can predict what will be, what will be happening. The Savage Roar might be for one mana, yeah. Force of Nature for four. Yeah. That's just too big of a mess. Oh, my, oh wow. Life Coach is coining. Life Coach picked up the coin. No, okay. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's boom. We're going for Boom, and Elki is going to have a second Emperor tick if he wants it. There is the consideration here that he might just choose to uh, Living Roots and trade into the Doctor Boom this turn. Would you? Because double Savage Roar... I mean, you can first attack with the 1-1 one -one to bomb, to a bomb. Yes, that's that's free. If it hits the Emperor, that doesn't really change anything. I guess if it does like 3 or 4 damage to the Emperor, then, then, you trade. then you'd be more inclined to trade it. Yeah, yes, I like exactly. this line. Yeah, let's let's get the information first, find out what the boom bots want to do before we make any hasty decisions. And uh, if the Emperor takes a, a decent amount of damage, then we'll just trade it in. Elki is musing over his options here. I mean, the, the thing with trading off the Emperor that I don't really mind here is that he already has those two powerful six mana plays in his hand for next turn anyway. Yeah. So uh, the second Emperor tick doesn't really seem to accomplish too much, but it looks like... He has uh, decided that face is in fact the place. He's going to pick up his second tier. Five mana boom, five mana law, five mana ancient. Uh, sorry, five mana force of nature. Um, but now, oh, wow. now the swipe has some potential to do some work in terms of tempo here. If he can so, get clear with the boom bot and the swipe, exactly, uh, and then get the shade of Naxxramas into play as well, then the the emperor discounts aren't going to matter too much here because he's just going to be so far ahead on tempo. Wow, boom bot first? Why? Uh, Right, you swipe the Thorasan first, and then... Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but why would you do that? What 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 would have been changed? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just a lower percentage play, right? You swipe the Emperor first, then you do all the last damage to the Emperor with the Boombot. It's the highest percentage play, I think, to get the ball clear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, if you attack with the, uh, with the bomb to the Emperor and kill the Emperor, mm -hmm. would that change his play and he would have go for Azure Drake instead and Hero Power? No, oh, wait, so if you attack the Emperor, you can hit four on the Emperor, four on the Harrison, or three on the Harrison to make a board clear. Uh, if you do it the other way, you have to hit... Uh, you have to hit at least... You have to hit three or four on the... No, actually, I think Life Coach might be right there. Funnily enough, it, it's it's counterintuitive, but I think he's actually right. I think that's a higher percentage clear. Because you, you leave yourself the option of swiping either target afterwards, depending on what happens with the boom bot. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Then anyway. we'll have to, to count that after the tournament. I'm yeah. really interested <laughs> in this scenario. Yeah. Like, I don't see Life Coach making mistakes often, so that has to be something about it. 
indeed. Anyway, uh, Elki generates his own Dr. Boom here for five mana, which, as I said, you know, the benefit of the second Emperor tick didn't really get him very far. He was making that same play this turn regardless of whether he traded or not. Mm -hmm. um, but he does have the Dr. Boom on play. As a Drake is played to probably trying to pick up a big game hunter here, but he whiffs on the big game hunter. So he has to make the decision here as to whether he is the aggressor in this matchup or not in this situation. And that will dictate whether he chooses to go to face, whether he trades the boom, whether he chooses to take extra value trades on the board. Um, I think... I think I would have gone face. Uh, are you just dead to Savage Raw, though, is the well, question? Well, how do you win if, you, if he already has the Savage Raw and the combo access? Mm, good question. Right? Yeah. So how much damage is this with Savage Raw? It's 10 plus 12, 22. And Life Coach is at 24 right now. Yep. So that Keeper plus Savage Raw would have been lethal, but it's a little bit short. And he doesn't have the Savage Raw anyway, so it's all a bit of a formality. So I, I love that attack from, from Life Coach, because what it does, once you switch back to Elki's perspective here, you can quite clearly see that Elki now has to respect the Life Coach's aggression. There's no way that he can make an aggressive play here. He has to respect the opponent's Dr. Boom. He has to trade into it. Um, and he might even be forced into making a, an Ancient of Law healing play or a Force of Nature defensive clearing play. So, um, yeah, Life Coach definitely gets paid out for his aggressive line there with the 7-7 seven, seven attack to face. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, oh, Elki will heal? No, he's drawing cards. Yeah. Interesting. Because now he... He, ha he needs to trade with the with the Doctor Boom first, and then the bombs need to clear minions. That's for sure. Oh, here we well, go. I mean, that's okay. It's not it's not ideal. Obviously, he'd have loved to kill the Shade with the first bomb, so he still had the chance to attack into the Drake with the second bomb and potentially clear that out as well. But I'm sure he's not going to complain too much about just clearing out that Drake there straight away. And you know what I like uh, the most about the Ancient of Law play this turn? Yeah. Because Life Coach, if any other minion would have been played. Life coach would have the almost assert would have almost been certain of his opponent not having savage right. war and uh, force of nature. Yeah. But if you play the ancient of law, that puts three more cards into your hand instead of one mm -hmm. for the next turn, which will generate doubt into your opponent. Does he have the lethal now? So it, it will change the the, the dynamic. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, Life Coach is sat here on nine mana, but this is this is very much the opposite of the first game in terms of Life Coach's hand. He's got all the minions, but none of the combo pieces. And this is the point in the game where he'd love to start drawing the combo pieces, but he's he's staring down at a board right now that is pretty threatening to come back and kill him. Keeper of the Grove, just gonna snipe down a 1-1 to reduce the potential Savage Raw damage by the looks of things. Generate another minion on the board for extra pressure himself, and then I'm sure... Ooh, Shade not revealed, interesting. I might have considered pushing face with the Shade there. That's a good point. Does it change anything with a Savage Raw draw? You can't really predict that. No, it's, it's hard to say. I think it's pretty close. Um... You, you, you're asking, I mean, I guess your board is a little bit exposed to swipe at that point, because uh, the 5-5 five, five trades into the 3-5 so nicely, you swipe the 4-4, four, four, and then the boom bot hit, does the one last damage to the slime, so... Yeah, I guess that's that's reasonably fine to keep the shade hidden, and he gets the nice news that he has successfully played around swipe. Swipe comes down, takes out the 2-4 minion. Oh! Oh my god. Uh, I believe there's a term for this, Lothar. I think it's eSports, right? That's that's what people say. Ah, uh, don't be like, you know, that type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, it does some justice in the world, right? Life Coach did kill the Harrison Jones. Yeah. With the bomb, so sure. now Elk has the same outcome. Like, this is something that I really dislike about Dr. Boom, is the fact that when both players play the Dr. Boom in the same game, one can deal two damage to the face with the bombs, and the other one deals eight damage to two minions, and they both die. That's like I spend I'm spending ten mana on minions, and they die to three minions from your Doctor Boom. Great deal. And that is lethal, right? Exactly there. lethal. Yeah, and that is yeah. Player count was just a little bit late switching. That is Elki that is achieving lethal right now. 18 damage exactly with the Force of Nature Savage Raw combo, and Elki ties up the series one game to one. 100% of the game so far finished out by Force of Nature Savage Raw combo. I'm almost sure that there will be no game that will not end with a, without a Savage Raw. <laughs> okay. Well, right. we'll see. 
We'll keep an eye on that one, Lothar. That's Lothar's personal prediction for this series. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have a cat on my lap, so I can't really move. <laughs> Let's get off. Hey, buddy. What? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if Chad saw that, but... Uh, Peter, call Peter. <laughs> um, so what is happening now? Life Coach doesn't have the Innovate this time, but he has Darnus Aspirin, and Elke has the Innovate. Double force of nature is about as grimy as that gets, though. Throws out the greetings. Um, hmm. Well, coin, you know, coin aspirin doesn't really get you anywhere with this hand, so. I agree. You know, just it, it's just about a two damage, right? So yeah. that doesn't really do much. This this is a nice pickup, though. The living roots, either way, whether he plays it this turn or decides to hold it, it will allow him to deal with the aspirin on the following turn, and then his follow up to that is innovate emperor. So you know, that that living roots probably turns out to be a pretty important draw. Hmm. Well, now it has to be. Darnus is Esperant. Yep. And Elki has an answer to that. Yep, exactly. So either way, he could have played them to be 1-1s on the previous turn. But that would be they... really bad against the hero power. Right? Yeah, exactly. If your opponent has nothing to do, then uh, you give them a turn with their hero power, whereas this way you just deal with the Aspirant exactly the same way as you would do anyway, but not presenting your opponent the option if they don't have the Aspirant in hand. Um, so now we're going to get Coin Shredder from Life Coach, and I imagine this is just going to get answered by the Innovate Emperor this turn, unless a Shredder is drawn. A oh. Shredder is drawn! Okay. But it's, I feel it's still uh, Emperor. Okay. Because it, it puts your opponent, if he has a, another 4-drop or 3-drop, right. then he can play it without Yeah, him. especially since he just coined that 4-drop, which is generally indicative of him having a second 4-drop, or at least something that he wants to do on this turn. Um, the only like proactive play he could make for 4 mana this turn would be Keeper of the Grove to shoot for 2 damage, so yeah, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I like the uh, the Emperor play there. Quite good outcome from the Palter Shredder. Yep. 3-2 is... Uh, I feel like the 3-2 outcome from the Pile Shredder is something that I see the least when yeah. it comes to two drops. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. I feel like there's a ton of 3-2s in the game, but actually when you think about it, there's a lot more, like, not 3-2s, right? Like, 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 yeah. 4-4. Because if you, if you play Arena, the only you see a, a huge amount of two drops, but they're all the two threes and the three twos because that's what people pick. But actually, mm -hmm. like, outside mm -hmm. of that, there's, like, a million other two-drops that people just never pick in Arena and you just don't see, apart from coming out of Pilot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it actually matters a lot now because you're able to um, utilize the Innervate for one damage so you can trade with the Azure Drake. Now is the question, do you play your own Azure Drake so you can rip the Wrath from the top of the deck? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> or you play the Belter, and I guess that the Azure Drake will be better this turn, because it's it's um, it's um weak to a swipe, but so it's Belcher. Yeah. Because it will die to the hero power anyway. Exactly. And 1-2, um, it's not really that relevant. Yeah. But if you rip the Wrath, I would change so much. So. Yeah, agreed. Also, Belcher is just a better defensive card to have in the late game to defend against Force of Nature, Savage Draw. It's like one, it's probably the best card in the game apart from like Lower Fair, but defending against that combo because the combo just trades so horribly into a Sludge Belcher. Yeah, that's correct. Harrison Jones again. Yeah, not really getting much work done in this matchup. Elki obviously targeting things, uh, expecting a lot of Warrior, perhaps expecting a lot of Paladin as well. Harrison Jones is definitely one of the cards that can tilt the secret Paladin matchup in favor of the midrange Druid. Uh, it's a fairly even matchup overall, but you know, cards like you know, extra copies of Big Game Hunter, Mind Control Tech, Harrison Jones, those are the cards that you want to include to like really swing that matchup in your way. So Elki may have been predicting a lot of Paladin in this tournament, and amazingly, <laughs> We haven't seen a single one so far, so... That's a good point. I thought that there would be 15 of them and one priest. <laughs> <laughs> no, surprise. Zetalot's just playing Secret Paladin as well. He's given up on priest. He likes winning now. I, I thought really someone will bring a Secret Paladin and uh, anything can happen Paladin. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah, I, that's, that's exactly Because it's such, I... such a good strategy. Yeah, agreed. Hmm. Well, anyway, so far, there was no... Paladin in the tournament yet, mm -hmm. which I guess, I mean, I'm sure that if a Paladin turns up in the tournament, Twitch chat would go crazy and they will spam it like, this is what it comes to Hearthstone being a game because everyone should play a Paladin. But, you know, <laughs> it's not the case in this tournament. Surprisingly, 
so. Yep. And Elki just goes for the most aggressive line he can take this turn, using all of his mana manipulation, his discounted uh, Thorasan cards, as well as his Innovate, just to create the biggest turn possible onto the board. Does expose himself to a swipe. I believe he's already seen one swipe from Life Coach. There's, yep. there's, a, there's a lot of druiding going on here, so it's hard to keep track of exactly who's used what. Um, but I think he's already seen one life coach, one one life coach from swipe. What's one swipe from life coach? So this this seems like a fairly secure play onto the board. And again, asking his opponent to hero power on turn seven is uh, something we've talked about at length. Not something druids want to be doing on turn seven. Hmm. Uh, well, now I'm thinking like if you want to go aggressively and deal damage. The opponent's face like through the claw charge put your opponent on 17 yep you already so low tap you didn't see taunters exactly right from no from l king so that might be the difference yeah belcher is better in this situation way better yeah i agree again sludge belcher contests pilot shredder just so damn well to the point where l king might even be considering force of nature in this sludge belcher Yep, looks like that's what's going to happen. Uh, he's going to have to hero power to make it efficient, though, if he wants to get the damage through from the Shredder to face. But it looks like he's going to value playing the Shredder next Ramus here and just uh, trade a little bit more inefficiently into the Sludge Belcher, use the Shredder to take out the slime at the end. I like that. Yeah, I like it too. Well, he's putting himself on a Savage Raw draw to win the game here. But speaking of Savage oh, Raw draws... Oh. That is a hand full of damage right now. I mean, I guess co you'd... combo him, combo him again next turn. <laughs> Let's count the damage, because if you play the combo this turn, you can kill the Palter Shredder and uh -huh. still the deal 8 damage to the face. Uh -huh. So, that means you will most likely have lethal with the second combo the turn after that. Right, you do open yourself up to the Ancient of Law that way, though, and... Does killing the Shredder really achieve anything? I think like if we're going to make the combo play, you just outright combo face both turns. But then you can die to the combo from your opponent. Yeah, but you're looking at you're looking back at a hand that's going to have three cards in it, and he's just used a Force of Nature. So I think Ancient of Lore is a lot more likely than Force of Nature plus Savage Roar at that point. But anyway, all irrelevant because Life Coach goes with a completely different line, just chooses to generate the minions onto the board and look to deal the damage with one combo. But Elki here is going to have to use his... Uh, Second Force of Nature to clear out this board. Attacks with his Shredder first. Interesting. I don't think any Direwolf or Flame Tongue Totem or anything would have had any effect on it there. Um, so I guess... No, I guess he should... Well, there's one attack difference. Right. So it could have mattered. Okay. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, now without the presence of Force of Nature in his deck, he's going to have to build a board to win this game. He's going to have to fight for the board because all he has left in his deck in terms of burst damage now is Savage Roar and, and possibly uh, an additional swipe or something on top of that. So he is going to have to continue to maintain this board position as much as he can against the uh, insane card advantage for Life Coach at this point. But looking down at Life Coach's hand, those cards don't really do anything except kill his opponent. Well, I guess this is the turn one combo. Yeah. You combo and you can use Wrath to kill the 2 free. Yep. Because you know your opponent used both uh, Force of Natures, but yep. he still has a potential Savage Roar twice. Right. Right, so... Hmm. Yeah, I like it. 14 to face, Wrath, the Blood Cell Raider. You, uh, you beat Ancient of Law. Do you beat... Yeah, you beat Druid of the Claw Hero Power as well. Yes, you do. So, yeah, you, there's, I don't think there's too many outs to, to beat this line. If you just deal 14 to face, wrath down the 2-3. I think this is what Life Coach is going to take this turn. Don't really see it going any other way. No. And that means the game goes to Life Coach. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, what? what? Where are we pointing that tree, Life Coach? No, but you know, what? Why? Well, does it make a difference? Ancient of Law makes a difference. Ancient of Law hero power now. No, 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 he still has five mana of Force of Nature, never mind. Yeah. But like, Ancient of Law hero power, you go to 16. Hmm. So now you don't have lethal against Ancient of... I, like, what are you saving that Wrath for at this point? I don't understand. Not sure. Mm, but, uh... Interesting. Uh... But, I mean, he had a point with the Boombots that we questioned, right? 
Yeah. So I guess there is something that we are missing that Life Coach thought about and thought it's better to save the grab for. Because he can play the grab next turn with the combo also. Yeah. And uh, that would make a difference with a Belcher. Uh, so you could three it and then two it with your face. Because that's, uh, no, that's only eight no. damage to the face. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference either. Again, I think you'd rather full combo face when you're up against Belcher at that point. So, I don't know. But anyway, it's all irrelevant. In the end, the com the turn nine combo into turn ten combo, or whatever it was, seals out the game. And Luthar, so far, your prediction is holding true. That is yep. three games, three Savage Roars ending them. Well, three Savage Roars and Force of Natures. Right. So, in to be honest, I think we saw how many full combos being played. Uh, Every time a full combo finished a game, so that was three times. Elki used one to clear a boom, and then so there was four the times? additional one from Life Coach in that game. So five. So five. Five full combos of in Force of Nature in, in three games. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so Wildgrove Innovate Druid of the Claw. Uh, we have just the Shade of Naxxramas here from Life Coach. So I'd say Elki definitely has the better of this exchange, especially now he got that Shredder. And wow, well, Elki sees the curve straight away. Coin Wild Growth into Innovate Druid of the Claw into Pilot and Shredder. And this is awesome. This is like so scary. Yep. Uh, especially when you're forced to turn to Hero Power. Mm -hmm. And we are not exactly sure if the players are switching the decks or not because we didn't get the memo, uh, but I'm guessing they didn't. Because we saw Elki playing twice a deck with Harrison Jones, I guess the other deck just has to be more awful against other druids. I guess I so, know. yeah. Um, but it looks very much like we're going the distance here. I mean, maybe a little bit too early, because his hand is now pretty much out of steam, but if you're going to have a hand that's out of steam, you want to do it while you already have two massive minions on board. Because now he can just spend his turn removing whatever steam? his opponent plays. But why, why are you saying it's out of steam when you have so so much answers right, to whatever I mean, that, would yeah, play yeah, that, that, was, that was the point I was going to make. Like You don't oh, okay, have any sorry. more minions to play, but you still feel in a comfortable position because you can just spend your turn removing whatever your opponent's going to play. Kind of like Tempo Mage style, right? Like You play a couple of early minions and then you just start flame cannoning stuff and hitting face. And that's what the druid is going to do here with the swipe and the wrath and just try and take down anything that's played from the opponent. Hmm. What? Well, in this situation, I guess you need to put a body, a body on board, right? So you probably yeah. play the Keeper of the Grove and uh, silence the Keeper. Uh, sorry, it silence the Palter Shredder. That's yeah, so I bad. But I don't think you have any other options unless you want to use the swipe. But then you still can't kill the Druid of the Crown next turn. And it might just it might just mean that you decrease the amount of attack on board by one, an example, or zero. Wow, damage instead of silence. Because I thought. Uh, okay, so I guess he's taking the risk here. I mean, I'm sure Elki will see through this, but I guess like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels so far behind that like this is obviously setting up a swipe, right? Like the four three to go into the two four, and then he can swipe on the following turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, Elki's going to see through this. He, his turn was swipe anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just take down the Keeper, 8 to face, and yeah, this is a pretty dominating position from Elki in this game. True. Well, let's see if it will be... No, there's an option to, to actually play the card, so you need to trade. And life code is going, unfortunately for him, really low in life totals. Yep. And that Savage Roar is going to help us out in a few turns if we're Elki. And yeah. looks like Swipe to come down again. Just push another four to face with the Shredder. You sure about the Swipe? Because I would favor the Keeper of the, uh, of the Grove. Put another body on board. So if you I'll top keep... deck... Uh... Sure, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, so totally so right. in case you top deck another Savage Roar, just win next turn. Yep, you're totally right. Keeper of the Grove Wrath is a, is a much better play. Why I'm an idiot. See. It's fine. Um, just push another th four face with the Shredder. You miss the hero power this way, but yeah, much, much better to get the extra minion on the board. I like this. Yep. And Life Coach is in a very dangerous position. I think that's the turn when you either play high risk or high reward, or you just... He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Savage Roll Swipe. Six, ten, the 10 damage from the hand, 16 damage in general. So, this is the first game that wasn't ended 
by force of nature. Yes, but your, your <laughs> prediction, Lothar, was that every game would finish with a Savage Roar, so you are still on point so far. That is a Savage Roar ending the game. Oh, at least this one was really, uh, really fast. I mean, yeah. th this is something that we we kind of see a lot in, in Druid Mirrors. If one player whiffs on the acceleration, the other doesn't. <laughs> just like spam re this Druid Mirror. Like... It feels like they, they would just sit here and like play a hundred games of Druid versus Druid if we let them. They're just like queuing up straight away. But like, you oh, know what? Screw they, these casters. They have nothing interesting to say anyway. Let's just get back <laughs> into the game. Um, but I, I would say that both players actually probably like this because they're poker players, which are used to have a high amount of variance in games. Right. And now they're just re the right. same, the right. same into the same, right? Right. And this time, Life Coach has the Wild Grove, and Elki doesn't, unless there will be a top deck. Yup. And, and it's not. Jones again. Third time. That, that card has just been a curse for Elki. I think if that if that uh, Harrison Jones was, you know, I, I'm not sure what it what it is that he's replaced with. You know, might be a Druid of the Claw, might be an Azure Drake, whatever it is. I think if that card was um, wasn't Harrison and was that alternate card, that might have just helped Elki just to scrap out that one extra win he might have needed in one of these games. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the Dionysus Aspirant instead of Wild Grove? Because if you play the Dionysus Aspirant, then you are able to coin out the Azure Drake anyway. But if you play Wild Grove, then you have a certainty that you will play uh, the Azure Drake next turn. Uh, I think I'm fine with the Aspirant. I mean, the answer, like the only perfect answer to it is like Living Roots Hero Power. If you're forcing oh, your opponent, oh yeah, if you're forcing your opponent to wrap on turn three, that's kind of a win for you in a strange way anyway. Um, so I think I just don't mind getting the, the Aspirant down on board here, just pushing the tempo, especially when you have that Savage Roar in hand. I think you can just uh, pile on the minions. Life Coach disagrees, though. He's going to go with the consistency of the Wild Growth. Hmm. I'm always very worried when I have Aspirants in my hand, though. Like, I wanna oh, look use, at that. I want to use them. I want to use them early. Yeah, I would have got punished. I would have got punished. <laughs> um, but, like, whenever I have Aspirants in my hand, I want to use them early because I, I, just, I just hate that river crop feeling in the late game where I just have this two mana, two, three in my hand that doesn't do anything. So I always, like, I don't play Aspirants in Druid at the moment for that very reason. Like, mm -hmm. less so the, the mull opponent's mulliganing against it thing. I just hate how useless it is in the late game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of biased on that, that I just like to try and get it out as early as possible. Now, this turn is interesting, because I would favor Dinosaur Aspirant Hero Power this turn. Right. Because otherwise you lose the coin to play Azure Drake, and your turn 5 is not interesting anyway. Because you would, if you don't, uh, if you want top deck, I mean, sorry, top deck, if you want to draw a minion for 5 mana in the next 2 cards, you would have to play the Dinosaur's Aspirant next turn anyway. Um, hmm. And you're you're weak to Keeper of the Grove either way. If you play Dinosaur's Aspirant or if you play Azure Drake, they both die to Keeper of the Grove. Very true, yeah. So the result against Keeper is the same. Uh, the result against Swipe is a little better for you if you uh, do the Aspirant Hero Power turn. Mm -hmm. um, ooh. Do we, do we just contest this Drake with a Shredder now? Like you said, the Keeper does clear and leave you, you know, one minion ahead, but it's not a particularly imposing minion, whereas the, the Shredder into Drake interaction is pretty strong, but leaving an Azure Drake up on the board is always a terrifying feeling. It's hard to say. Looks like Elki is going to go for the Shredder here, though. Let's make let's hope he makes Twitch chat happy. He does. All right. Most important, oh, yeah. Most important thing in Hearthstone, as confirmed by Twitch chat, is where you Frager. put my little Shredder. Yeah. Huh. Well, that would be... Hmm. Well, it's a swipe turn, right? Uh, I mean, swipe is fine here, but there's but also the... just the opportunity to play Belcher. Belcher, does... hero power? Yeah, Belcher, hero power. Or you don't even have to hero power. It doesn't get fully contested by the board. You'd... Your opponent would have to have a, an answer, like uh, keep her to silence or be forced to use his hero power to get through the slime. Um, yeah, but what about Savage Roar? You have to take that into account. Mm, that's very true. And you don't want to see... Uh, you don't want to see... If you play a Belcher and your opponent plays a Savage Roar, he can kill the Belcher with a single um, Pilot Shredder. Then you can clear the slime. No, that's not efficient. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. But I think I would, I would use the Innervate. I'm not sure here. Like, probably Life Coach will make another play completely than, than I... Than I, than I would. 
Yeah, I think maybe looking at those two savage rules in his hand, he might be tempted to keep the innovate, but it looks like he's he's following your mentality here. He's gonna use it just to play around things like Savage Roar a little bit. Definitely like the Drake pushing face, and he's just gonna snipe down one of these adorable 1-1 one -one roots and just, just consolidate his board position a little bit there by using the innovate. Hmm. Well, there's a missing innovate for that card. But he has an option to clear first. I would... Hmm. There are two options. You either play the Harrison Jones, which is useless in this matchup anyway. Yeah. And you have a turn 6 play with Keeper of the Grove and Hero Power. Or you use the, key, uh, the Keeper this turn and you trade for the Azure Drake. Which is probably better. Because you don't want to see... You don't want... Nah. I don't know. I would probably play the Harrison Jones here. Because you... Are trading with the with the um, with the Belcher anyway with, with what you have on board. Yeah. But the problem is, if your opponent has the swipe, would he use that the last turn? And I think that might be the case that Elki is not taking into account, right? Because he would have used the swipe himself in life coach position last turn. Ooh, and that is a brutal Shredder minion. With the spell power, you know, there's a pretty that wide really range matter, of right? Shredder minions that were going to die, but you know, a 2-3 would have been lovely for him there, but yeah, the 2-1 is, is pretty miserable. By the way, it does double Savage Roar, so that's 12, 17 damage this turn. Nice. And there's another 2 going to face. He's going to push the damage with the minions. He's going to play the Aspirant. And it looks like we are very, very quickly closing in on the end of this game. Unless Elki chooses to make the defensive Force of Nature play this turn. But that Innovate probably seals his fate here. Because he will probably now Innovate one of his 7 drops. And that is going to end the game in favor of Life Coach. Yep. Nah, uh, he has to play the Dr. Boom. Yeah, it's one of those weird things, right? Like, we're sitting here, we can see he's going to die, but still, like, yeah, I mean, you, you have to you have to innovate a 7-drop here. Like, you don't win unless you innovate a 7-drop here. But we know it's going to kill him, but we're still advocating it as the right play. It's one of those weird quirks of, of Hearthstone. Unless you play Keeper of the Grove, you kill the 1-2. No, no, it makes no sense. You, know, <laughs> he, you probably have to play the Dr. Boom. If you want to win the game, you have to play the Dr. Boom. <sighs> And hope for an innovate top deck next turn. <laughs> yeah, seems good. Wow, he's going for the defensive oh, play. He is indeed. Okay. Um, but I mean, this is just going to put him in the same situation over the next two turns. We're going to, you know, any minion in the druid hand is just going to come down here. And wait, what? He, he went to innovate there. I think he thought he could kill the aspirant as well for a second. But, um, but yeah, I mean, any innovate in the druid, sorry, any minion in the druid's hand here is just going to come down, and you're going to be back in the same situation as you were previously. Uh -huh. um, so the force of nature just doesn't really achieve anything there. You had to make the play for board dominance, and uh, life coach is going to punish him pretty hard here. Drops the druid of the claw. Pushes I was the extra thinking damage. about actually charging. Right, I considered that as well. Um, but, you know, so he has six damage plus six twice. So he has eighteen damage next turn if this board isn't dealt with. And Dr. Boo and that's it. is gonna Oh wait, innovate wrath. That's eight damage from the um from the Savage Roars. Yep. Nine, thirteen damage. Oh, two of lethal. Yep. Innovate Wrath on the Aspirant is actually good enough to keep him alive here. And does that change anything that innovate? Well you can Wrath first to draw a card. Yeah, can't then innovate combo. If he gets it, he'll still be one mana short. I was uh, really surprised by not charging last turn. Right. That would have been lethal this turn. It would, yeah. It, of course, does open your board up a little bit more. You know, you have a much more fragile board to removal. Um, things like Swipe Keeper and would then clear your board. But you could have played uh, Druid of the Claw with one Savage Roar. Yeah, that's very true, actually. That's very true. Because that, that puts all. six damage right. on board with just Savage Roar. So that's 10, 12 damage last turn instead of... Uh, three. Yep, ah, never sense. mind. Well, there is the force of nature, but he doesn't have the mana to play it here, even with the innovate. But so he just has to try and make some play here again, similar to the situation in the last game, where okay, what are my opponent's outs here, and how do I beat those outs? 
And yeah, I think I like, yeah, one Savage Raw right now, followed up by a combo next turn. This is what I was going to suggest. Yep. Deals a ton of damage. Now he still has the Taunt Minion in the way, preventing any sort of uh, aggressive backswing from the opponent. On top of that, he's just at 30 life, which is well out of range of anything that he can encounter. And that that's is about it. Gonna seal the game and the series for Life Coach. This time he. The combo. Well, the Force of Nature just finished up, so. Yeah, never mind. Yep. But yeah, the mirror of the druid is not something super exciting to behold. <laughs> um, we knew that all along. But yeah, LP will try. That was so perfect. It's like listening to your brain trying to search. No, for I'm just trying. Like... I was just trying to find something to yeah. to say about this matchup, <laughs> but it really comes along just to which player has Wago innovates and and draws the combo. And who doesn't, right? Yeah. Because that that's that's how the that's how this matchup looks. So the combo, Lothar. That ancient of law heal from Elki that turn means that Life Coach is forced to unleash the full combo. So we okay. get to add another combo to the books here. Life Coach is now clutching this out three games to two, and he will advance through into top eight tomorrow, where he is now the first repeat class player. Him and Tice. Even no Tizer will be playing Druids. No okay. surprise, G2 teammates have both decided to bring the same decks. Um... <laughs> Actually, well, well, I think uh, RDU was playing Druid too. Yeah. So all of G2 were playing yeah. Uh, Druids. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting th thing because there's probably this perception from you know, the general public of, who watch in the Hearthstone community that like all teams practice together all the time. Uh, um, that's not entirely true. Yeah, I mean, that's not. Them. Yeah, exactly. It's not the case. Like most teams, like most organizations, have a group of players that are under their umbrella. But those players all have like their own individual practice groups that they practice in with other players, other you know top pros in the community. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, Lothar, but I believe like G2 is very much like a close knit group that actually practices together and prepares for tournaments together. That's certainly the impression that I get by watching them play in tournaments. That's true. Like the. Our team in general is known for practicing together, but it doesn't doesn't um, doesn't mean that the, our players don't pra uh, are not practicing with other players from other teams too. But it, it's important. Uh, the the fact that it's important about the team is that before a tournament, they all gather together and think about the format and uh, fear craft about the decks together and then they practice and share stats and think about the outcomes and the changes for the decks. This is why you can see very similar deck choices for the whole G2 in almost every single tournament. Because yeah. they come to a conclusion and they pick that uh, they, they pick that conclusion as the best option for, for the deck choices. So this is why in the, in the Curse Trials yesterday, all of G2 were playing almost identical yeah. um, decks, if not identical, uh, or just like a few cards different. And this is why in this tournament, all of G2 players are also bringing probably the same lineups. So it's a, it's a testament to the the G2 lineup, honestly, because um, you know when you are a top player in something, it doesn't matter what it, what it is. There is a certain amount of ego that comes with that, and you think you know your way of playing the game, your opinions. You know you think they're correct, and everyone else is wrong. There's this kind of like natural attitude that comes with it. So the fact that G two are all willing to like listen to each other and go in the lab together, and then come out with like a collective best lineup that they all agree on, uh, is really testament to to their practice methods. But anyway. this is. This is something you, you you see in other card games, like in Magic the Gatherings. There's always a huge team that wins a Pro Tour in Modern because they came up with something ridiculous yeah, in, the yeah. in the test stage. But enough of chatter. Uh, we were behind schedule, so let's just wrap it up. Life Code advances to top 8, and we are going for a 10-minute break, and we'll be back with another pair of players to see the game uh, number 6, if I recall correctly, for today. See you guys. <laughs> 